your backline uh, like Impact is going to do. Same thing, Hauntzer, they talked about he had so much success on this Maokai. He was an absolute monster. Um, he just became a huge bully up on the top side, and he did a similar thing for TSM. He he jumped over the back of that dragon pit. He got them the kills right after objectives and stuff like that. I just, I just think that uh, these teams are so much more at home at playing these styles. Uh, they'll probably both draft. I think so, yeah. Five on five team fighting comps this game, I think. And that's kind of a fitting way to end this best of series, right? It certainly is. A bit more stable, perhaps, for both teams. Welcome, viewers, from NALCS2, as we are into champs like for game number three, our final game of the day. Fun way to end it here. Cloud9 on the blue side, banning away Rengar. 10 seconds for their second ban in this first phase. TSM over on the red, banning that Malzahar again. And there's the Merkai ban for Cloud9. So already the top lane tank full uh, shrinking. Interesting here. I mean, Shen is still up. Uh, the Nautilus and Poppy are still this kind of secondary, lesser Maokais of the, of the current meta. And we shall see which aspect they decide to go with. Because currently, I much, much prefer, if you are set on doing a front to back, uh, you know, kind of standard comp, tanks in the top lane are just better than tanks from the jungle. T uh, you know, the damage dealers from the jungle right now currently just have a speed advantage and the early game advantage over the tank junglers that it's just not worth it to change the role unless you have a player that heavily favors, you know, that style from previous seasons or something. Uh, it's just so much more standard to have. Tank top, you know, aggressive, early game, bruiser or assassin jungler to be able to create mid game plays as well as uh, add some extra damage for your team. A mid lane mage, that's a DPS mage. Um, and then the bottom lane that's going to bring CC and lethality. Yeah, <laughs> everyone wants lethality. There's Rise Man for C9. LeBlanc chase joining for TSM as Kha'Zix first picked by Cloud9. So despite all the hype around Graves, particularly on this patch, just not being first picked by either of these teams. TSM has shown such a high priority on this pick here for Spence Karen. I mean, back to back, they, they first rounded it on both sides. So Cloud9, I feel like this is you know, added weight because of the takeaway from Spence Karen, maybe. Um, and it is going to be going to fill that, you know, dueling assassin role uh, very quick from the jungle early on. We'll see what TSM answer with. There is your Graves that I mean, we've been setting up for him. Surely this, right? Yeah, Shane Graves to TSM. I mean, it'd be hilarious to me if Spence Karen pops off this game, like wins a player of the game, and the, then the series. You kind of wonder, okay, like, why didn't you play this already? But Cloud9, at least is, with the way the series have gone out, are going to take the Kha'Zix kind of away from Spence Garen here, but are going to push him onto what we might think is a better champion, but maybe Sven thinks differently. Definitely pretty close at the, at the, yeah, that's at the least here. Very curious to see if they actually still do want to go with a tank on the top side. Uh, with Maokai being banned and Shen already picked, Shen actually does quite well um, into Poppy as well. So maybe, eh, I mean, it's so it's so hard <laughs> to move Impact away from them, but. I would love to see this. Yeah, Impact just gonna take the Rumble instead. So you know what, I'll play the carry match up this time and see how I fare. Jin there for Cloud9 as well is particularly interesting because Varus is still available. And for Cloud9, even though we say the other roles are typically less efficient tanks, Smoothie, they have Smoothie, who has been not only one of the very best supports in the entire North American LCS right now, but also he has played quite a lot of the Taric of the Tom Kenta. If you have Taric on your team, a squishy comp that's invulnerable for quite a while. Pretty it, good. Somebody, yeah, it becomes a little bit less squishy. So that's still an option. Yes, it does mean that you're then laning with a melee uh, for that laning phase. But that is another, you know, look that Cloud9 could go to to balance out a little bit more front line for themselves if they really do want to work around that. Or you know, they could also go for that super high damage index. Well, here's Ash. So we welcome NALCS2. May have missed you in the first time, but welcome, guys. As we're halfway through this drop for game number three, Ash pick there for TSM's interesting. Gonna let Barris go. Cassio banned by TSM. Syndra banned by Cloud9. And again, we're in a similar position to game one, where I think both these teams are just gonna go after mid lane in the second yeah. ban phase. I, I like your point there in the middle about you know bypassing the Barris because usually right now on this patch we're like no brainer. Barris is your pick. That is the go-to marksman. However. TSM are making a very clear choice right now to go for more global presence, more picks that they can start off with the Ash Arrow with Shen. That is the one thing that Varus doesn't bring that the uh, 
uh, Jin and the Ash do more so with the long range engages. Uh, and that is is what they are going to bank on here. Good read though. On the Tom Kench, TSM ban away. It's good against the Ash and with her. They're going to take that away from Smoothie. Cloud9, where do they go with the second ban? Again, it's probably another mid lane ban. I did spy Reap it over Jensen's shoulder. So probably discussing likely picks and matchups. They actually will go support though for trading bans, if you will, in phase two, banning away the Nami. And, and now TSM, what do they go for? Is it Karma? Could very well be. And it's either going to be, uh, you know, the Karma or the Zyra, either of which, if you're thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna bring some more, you know, frontline presence to the team with this Taric pick. Ah, laning phase with a Jin Taric into an Ash, either Karma or Zyra is incredibly, uh, scary, especially since Shen being your top laner adds adds that cross map play possibility. So that might actually dissuade it there, but uh, we shall see. As C9 have to lock in both before TSM show their mid laner, and Jensen uh, is going to have to blind pick again on uh, Bjergsen to answer with whatever he pleases. Bjergsen's actually kind of picked every game as well. They uh, drafted pretty much identically in game number one, and the early rise pick meant that Cloudon had to show something. Echo maybe locked in here for C9. It is Echo there for Jensen, unless uh, Impact and Jensen are doing something real zany All with right. their mages, and now Smoothie has to round out the comp. He knows the support he's playing up against. Does he go for the Zyra? Does he want a defensive support? TSM, I think, smartly taking the more teamfight defensive support away from Cloud9, because like we kind of expected, it should be a pretty scrappy looking game. <laughs> I love the oohs and ahs over the uh, the mouse overs, uh, but yeah, kind of as expected here. I mean, laning laning with Jin plus Tarek would be a bit much to ask. It leaves a lot of pressure on the bottom side, so they're gonna lock in that Zyra for some, you know, more power down there. And man, this is gonna be another one of those, you know, cannot make mistakes. There's uh, there's definitely the the execution level is just gonna have to be high for Cloud9, and... Oh, wow! Oh, yes! Assassin Assassin! He's actually going Let's to Zed. Go. I mean, I was about to say, <laughs> I love the Echo pick because it blocks so many picks from Bjergsen. Uh -huh. You don't really want to play Corky into it. They banned it in game one. It's pretty good against Assassin. So what does Bjergsen do? He says, <laughs> screw it, I'm taking Zed. And having a Shen on your team really helps out when a lot of these lanes are going to be trading heavily and there's going to be a lot of duels that do break out. If Kha'Zix jumps on Graves while he's isolated in the jungle, which usually he'll get a good chunk out uh, and a small advantage, Shen pops up. Ooh, all of a sudden, that doesn't go so well. Zed plus Echo, all in each other. All of a sudden, that doesn't go so well. But uh, you are going to be giving up some pressure because the Rumble should be pressuring the Shen, should be pushing him. Flame Spitter through the minions plus the Shen uh, whenever possible. This should be fun. Do like to see Jensen and Bjergsen. We talked them up before the series. Always a treat to watch them two play against each other. And they'll take a, a very dramatic matchup into each other here. Bjergsen again going for the counter pick. Almost challenging Jensen here, saying, you know what? You want more of an assassin and diver? I'll take the assassin and diver. Definitely exciting. We'll see if they actually are going to trade that heavily, because both of the junglers have paid a decent amount of attention around that side of the map. And also Impact, of course, the other side of the story here. He's going to take the Rumble into the tank matchup this time. I mean, Shen brings so much more than just decent laning and good tankiness. Sure, he's not Maokai in the team fight, but he's great in the side lanes. And Impact, he's had so many strong games recently on tanks. We also know that when it counts, when he really needs to be clutch for his team, he can carry hard for Cloud9. So this is it, our final game of the day. Cloud9 TSM going to play one more. Number one ranked team versus number two. And even if TSM win and hand Cloud9 their first loss, their first loss, they still will hold similar positions. All right. Let's see if uh, both of them start Raptors this time around. Last time around, I, you know, I do like getting that early award in there to either give you the early intelligence that they're working on, Raptors start, or even dissuade it. Yeah, I think TSM are playing with the memory of the last few games. There's been a lot of checking in the Raptor camp for Cloud9. So I think just grouping up together and hoping someone foolishly walks out and maybe gets himself killed. All right. Let's set up the you know, early stages of these lanes and talk about why 
they are going to, why we expect them to be heavily trading. Actually, 3v3, hold on the one Goes in for a force the flash from Impact. All right, that's an early flash down. Now let's revisit those lanes early on. Pastry, uh, Rumble, who usually likes to get, you know, pushing lane with Flame Spitter and trying to harass at the same time. Now incredibly vulnerable, does not have flash for impact. This is definitely going to be a, a target zone for uh, jungler intervention. You have to start worrying, okay, do I need to cover a counter gank? Or can we track Svenskeren well enough that I don't have to spend time up there and allow Impact to be on his own because Impact probably won't die, uh, you know, as long as there's not a lot of intervention up there. Rumble, even without Flash, should be fine. He actually took a bunch of health, a bunch of damage there. It carried over because he wasn't able to base. Plus, I think he might have taken one hit from the Golem. So he's even lower than I last saw him, but he's coming in, no Flash, half health into the into the matchup. And Spinscaren is still on top side. Going up towards Krug signals he might make a visit over or he might do an early recall and then go down to his blue quadrant. We'll keep track of Sven after doing that camp. Sneaky eats a big chunk of poke though from Biofrost. Level one can be tricky sometimes. Yeah, I mean, bottom lane also is gonna trade heavily, but I'm so curious about topside because Shen landing a taunt is so easy when he has flash advantage. And, and Hanzo should be able to set up a Graves. And Graves is moving there right now. Yeah. It's just that impact, as we said, like, comes this, this mental game. Is he coming to get me? Uh, am I gonna actually fake ward? He walks down to make them think he's used his trinket ward. I, I believe he used it early on in the invade. Yeah, it's somewhere else. So, <laughs> so Sven Skarin gonna take the scuttle curb and said, Impact maybe didn't have it up. Yeah, that was weird with uh, the spectator yeah. then suddenly showing that he now has cooldown. But anyways, Fake warding is definitely... Oh, there's the jump for Contract! Contract gets the jump, and scare him pretty strong. My blood! Oh, oh the first blood! In for Contracts! Oh! Oh my goodness! Contracts immediately taking advantage of the situation. Spent scaring in full vision. And I said later, if, you know, a Cossack jumps on the Graves where they usually have this burst advantage, uh, can get turned around by a Shen. Shen's still level three. Not gonna help you out there. And that's pure 1v1. Contracts flashing over, who doesn't get hit by the second activation of End the Line and gets in range for the kill. Grabbing first blood for C9 and critically removing any threat for the top lane here. You know, Impact now doesn't have to worry about Sven Skarin because he just cleared his red quadrant and got first blooded. If he went back to top side, he would be giving up so so much on the bottom quadrant. And Hauntzer just not in a position to fight either. He's getting pushed in by Impact now, keeping up in CS, which is nice. Impact gonna take a turret hit there as he continuing to harass Hauntzer. But the Rejuvenation Bead's gonna have to work over time and then some to get all that health back from Rumble. Man, Impact gets the play out. The Rumble harassment anyway. Meanwhile, walking over a ward here initially is Contracts. Still going to be able to steal away. Actually, yeah. Sven should check this because they saw him walk toward the area. Not going to check. Huh. He's going to wait damage instead. Contract isolated him again. Sven Skarin going to go down against Contract. Gets another. I almost want a replay because I thought he walked over that dying ward. He did, but they thought he was just Didn't at the Raptor camp. did they him out as well? Yeah, I think they just thought he was at huh. the Raptor camp though because they don't have any other vision. Yeah, all right. Well, regardless, gonna, he face checks and contracts is waiting. So we, we are find, we are going to find that replay so we can get a vision toggle and see if they actually saw him walking okay. over the ward. Because if they did, that is just uh, that is no respect at all. And Spence, you deserve what you get if you uh, if you don't respect that invade. Contracts returns to the scene of the crime almost because another kill on the Sven. Let's take a look at this. So the ward is just there was a close. yellow ping. Maybe that. Uh, I need to know whose ping that was then. Because uh, it could have been C9 pinging that they saw the ward dying. Uh, but he stepped out just as it was dying. So that was close. Uh, I mean, we'll give, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and mm -hmm. say they didn't see that dying. Because that could have been Cloud9's ping saying, a ward just died here. Now I'm going in. Uh, either way, though, this is going to be huge for the early game. As this is a very snowball Ikazix. Ben certainly looks surprised. Kind of rubbing his brow after that play. It's been tough for him. Two deaths already handed over to Contracts in under six minutes. Sneaky and Smoothie also getting their push on here. Ash does go back for the early BF sold by, so total looking good as far as early items and CS goes. 
impact up here as well, though. Hans is actually keeping pretty close in CS. Impact though, almost always have that damage advantage, so got to play carefully around the rumble. Also, though, again, just taking what CSC can. Feeling pretty comfy with that Spectre's cow. All right, I called in to the observers uh -huh. for some play-by-play uh, -play, uh, on that last second as the ward expired. It was TSM got a slight second of vision, uh, so they did see the icon there at least for Kha'Zix moving in and still paid the price. Stop. Let's see though, because that is in the past. Now what is he going to do with it? <laughs> Kha'Zix is off to a very good early start. Plus, he's got the advantage of the challenging smite over uh, the vision for Spence Karen. So he just has complete carte blanche to just run over anywhere in the jungle and basically create any sort of plays the team wants to go with. Another interesting rotation from Cloud9. Not really behind in the lane, but actually moving topside to pressure oh, Hunter off. This is dirty. Walking past the turned off ward. Bio, wants to go punish him again. Firefox is here as well. Gonna try and steal this away, I think, with a smite. Really wants that. Might be too much. Doesn't <laughs> get the smite off. Does get locked down, but the ultimate's gonna keep him safe. Yeah, early smite there. Isn't gonna cost him, you know, any other summoners or any amount of health, but gonna jump out here and Biofoss rotating up as expected here to try and catch this wave and match the 2v2 for TSM. TSM really just trying to stabilize here as game three, the deciding match. They want to at least get to the point where they get to combine their Ash Arrow Ooh. with their Shen Stand United. Dirksen though. Really nice here from Jensen. Gonna have to commit the ultimate. That's Shen as well. Oh. Not nearly enough. Jensen saves his ulti as well. The first gen ultimate before you've started to get any sort of cooldown reduction as well. Uh, very long cooldown, and Jensen gets that one out with almost no effort. Didn't have to expend anything there. Definitely a lot of control here. Going Cloud9's way and removing a lot of the comeback options that TSM would would want to try and use. The other one definitely being that Ash Arrow that should come in soon for Turtle. Well, it's been a while again since Bjergsen's played Zed. This is the first time he's ever played it. This split, of course, is a trademark Zed player. Time and time again. I was kind of wondering when he was going to feel like playing it. Looks like today's the day, but Jensen holding steady in the mid lane. Nice and safe on the Echo, particularly with Chrono Break available. Good taunt by Haunter. Forces him back to equalize. Oh. That could be a solo kill. Haunter grabs it. All right. The question is, who will step up for TSM to get them out of this situation? Haunter says, I. They've got more problems to deal with, though. Yeah, Contracts and Jensen teaming up. Bjergsen I don't, still hasn't gone for a recall. Yeah, a good chunk of gold in his pocket. So, wanted to base, but the turret was under threat. Transcarin does what he can to save him, but bjergsen has got no ulti. Jensen still has Chrono Break, so Transcarin just going to have to help him shove in the mid lane. Yep. One of the things Graves does best. Taxi lane. Come on, oh, tough minions. Help you out for a, a purchase here. Honestly, with Bjergsen opting to go for this uh, Lethality early build. Oh, he's sticking around to do another wave. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting because... In the pure 1v1, having the extra, you know, Hex drink, Drinker rush is always super nice. But having the extra damage to be able to, you know, kill them in the all-in or kill someone else if you're roaming maybe bottom or something is an interesting give and take here. You're a little bit, you know, less tanky, or a lot less tanky, not having Hex Drinker, but it uh, does give you that extra kill pressure on somebody else. Been spotted by a nice word from Cloud9, so this lane gank... Not going to work out. It hits the recall button immediately, so it won't waste too much time. But I like the thought. Good cancel from Sneaky. Of uh, well, sort of trying to set something up with the arrows. Fence going in a recall further back in the lane. But Cloud9 know that mid and bot are a little safer. The team out now up for Haunter means that Impact's kind of feeling the pressure in the lane. Made the misstep under the turret. Got himself solo killed. Yeah. And Haunter's uh, got pretty firm control of the wave. Haunter, the... Shining start here for TSM so far. Even though he had to use his first ultimate to go save or maybe give a cushion. I don't know if he had to, uh, but regardless, didn't get anything out of it. Listen, has gone back as well. Looks like Edge of Night might be the first item it Does at least have a no magic oh, mantle. Sure. Yeah. Which makes sense given the mage matchups. Edge of Night's just, I mean, of all the many wonderful things it does, the fact that it's kind of like a hex drinker that does even more damage is, I think, for me, the thing that pushes it over the edge. 
Yeah, definitely the low cooldown on spamming your shield is yeah. super nice. The one thing you do lose out on here is that Hex Shrinker's super early impact. Super cheap. As soon as you combine it, you have this giant shield. Um, and Edge of Night, you just have to wait a little bit longer to actually combine it. Turtle, though. Good arrow. Has to get out from Smoothie, though. Snare gonna land. Fire Frost here to save him. Strangle Thorns. Turtle gonna flash. Heals as well. So who else is here? C9 TPing Impact in. Ultimate is available. Contract's also here. Great equalizer from Impact. Fire Frost burning down. Oh. Double the turtle. Sand United needs to be completed. Slap complete! Does go down. Spent. Uh, contract's gonna fall. Oh. Frost actually gets it. Yeah, even though Contract's blows up, that's gonna give them control of this turret. They should be able to get first. All right, they already got it in mid lane, but they're yeah. able to get another. <laughs> Turret here, 4C9, overloading on this top side. It should be answered by TSM on the bottom side because Sven is already you know, counter jungling down there. But uh, going for that 1v1 trade, TSM actually in the hole right now isn't the worst thing for them. They're able to get a counter kill on the contracts. They're able to trade an outer turret and, and stabilize a little bit as far as that gold is concerned. And there's your Edge of Night completed for Bjergsen. So now he has bypassed that little area of uncertainty and should be able to spam that anytime he goes in for a move, be able to negate the first spell. There's Tower in for TSM, so after all the trades, it's 2,000 gold ahead for Cloud9, and Jensen in particular will be happy to have gotten bonus gold from that first turret in mid lane. That is going to force Bjergsen up top. He's going to start split pushing, or at least taking that sideway farm. Total going to commit to mid lane. Doesn't have a, a turret to fall back to, but probably the safest place for him to farm and can be impactful with the arrows as well because Ash will need to build up more farm for this game. Definitely true. Turtle will be in a hole for a while. He's going to have to, you know, Essence Reaver is completed. Yeah, you start getting some cooldown reduction and throwing off these arrows, but definitely not going to be the damage output of Sneaky, who's already off to the races with his own Edge of the Night completed. So C9, now it's pretty much opposite situations from last game. C9, they're the ones with the early lead, with the damage heavy comp, looking to snowball, chain these outer turrets, and start pressing TSM in. You want to starve the enemy team of resources. You take all the outer turrets, move up your ward line slowly, so you deny jungle farm. Uh, you make them walk the long routes between their lanes, so it makes it more difficult to farm as well. And the counter there from TSM is, can you hit your ha Ash Arrows, you know, to pick members of Cloud9 off and try to get back in that way? Well, much like in, much like we saw in game one, and a little bit in game two, it's tricky when you're losing on the overall map space mm. to have vision to make those plays, so Cloud9 should be holding steady. And even more so, uh, even though they do have Hanser on Shen, who's doing very well for himself, you have to worry about what you're giving up whenever you try and go for a kill on one of those picks because Impact here, still pushing up. It looks like they're actually making a play on the bottom side with Spenskaren was sitting around the top edge and they sent Hansa to go look for Impact. But Impact actually evaded them. Sven has to just walk away with only a scu uh, scuttle take. Smoothie still chilling out here. I think he's got a safe haven to farm from here in the mid lane. Also, it's definitely worth mentioning that Cloud9 are running that double solo laner teleport, right? Jensen on this Echo, uh, even though he used the, the early teleports to get back to lane for, you know, laning priority, he has it available now, and he's level 11. So this is another thing that you do have to worry about as far as the map opening up and the ward line slowly encroaching. Not only could it be impact teleporting in for these, but Jensen could also pull the double teleport. Um, and if C9 just go 1-3-1 one, one, and impact while he doesn't have flash, wants to play more safe and just hold bottom side, if Jensen can push up, Cloud9 can kind of, you know, section off the bottom area and try to move in for that last outer turret. Understandably, this game is, uh, feels quite a bit slower than our first two. Still pretty even as far as overall gold goes. See, and I know they have a lead, but they want to, gonna want to play very slowly with their side waves and their double globals. TSM on the other hand, trying to make a play. Gonna look for impact. Bjergsen Flash. flashes in, uses the death mark. Taunt down there onto impact. That's an easy pop as Haunta gets it. Yep. Impact there going for the wave as he dies. Does get some gold while he's going down. And that's the benefits of you know setting up your 1-3-1 beforehand, even though you lose impact. Cloud9 are pressing heavily on the secondary turret of Sopside, and Sneaky opens up mid. 
Oh, Arrow finds Contracts, though. Now TSM gonna pop. Contracts oh. lives through the collateral damage. Looks like they left Bjergsen on bottom side to be split pushing with Zed as well. Takes out another wave. And they don't give up the turret, though it is weakened pretty heavily. Yeah, will not regenerate either. Needs to go one step further in the turret for that. Ponto will retake this wave. No ultimate, but has the teleport. So TSM, get a little back there with some gold. And you have to say, there, there aren't a whole bunch of options for TSM to go for in order to get gold on this map. So the proactive use of their Shen ultimate uh, to be able to secure the kill on Imp Impact, who is still waiting on the flash cooldown to come back up, is definitely a good you know, move. Because there aren't too many proactive plays you can go for when you're in this situation to get some extra gold. They are able to make that one count. But it's not going to be much more after that, right? It's, it's a many-step process. Jensen's going to continue to get more irritating as the game goes on as well. We saw Bjergsen pretty much split push his way to victory with Echo and I believe Shen on that team as well. So you can see where the options are for Cloud9. Again, it's slowing things down here through the mid-game as the teams don't want to concede too much in what is the final game of this series. But Hunter especially still continuing to do work. 2-0-1 on the Shen. I think it'll be very telling if TSM actually try to contest this Drake. Because while they do have Turtles, Ash Arrow coming off cooldown very shortly here, uh, they don't have, you know, a huge amount of extra vision around the Drake, and it is still dangerous for them. Jensen's still as... facing. Oh. Good Spirit's Refuge, but shields up for Haunter. Jensen is a Protobot as well, so doesn't really need to stop here. Haunter going to just try to fight instead. Stun coming up. Protobot's in. It's going to be for the stun, but Haunter taunts out. Snare lands in for a smoothie, though. Good blast, couldn't oh. save Haunter. Jensen follow flashes. Haunter flashes as well. Juka de Q is not quite enough. And a Haunter maybe going to turn around. Jensen should have it, and he does. Because they ra roamed up to the top side with so many members, though, TSM slip in to try and trade an Ocean Drake for a single kill. And an Ocean Drake for just a single kill is pretty good if you're the team trying to trying to stay at your turrets a little bit and, and help regenerate. The problem would be if they give up more, because Cloud9 did push up mid lane. It doesn't like they have to give up more. So honestly, not too bad for TSM there as they get a Drake in exchange for Haunter's life. Haunter holds on to most of his cooldowns as well. Just had to burn the flash and very nearly killed Jensen 1v1. Which is quite impressive. Jensen looking for the turret. Big wave is there, but not sure that's enough to clean it out with Bjergsen here to answer. Cloud9 do not want to you know, give away a bunch of Drakes. TSM have gotten the first two. So they're actually feeling pretty good about it. Impact is the target once again. He has Flash this time. Smoke screen for Sven. 1v1. Needs the ultimate. Get a line it up. There it is, but it's not enough. Oh, it is! But Contrax gets the counter kill. Stand United can't save him. Impact, yeah, did not expect the explosion there to kill him for some reason and goes down with Flash up. Whoops. Well, trade there, I suppose. Sven's going with a good individual play. Although Haunts the Shield, not enough to save him, sadly. I mean. A risky play. It did end up paying off, but uh, I think Impact definitely should have been expected to flash early. And not now we're seeing another heavy trade here as all the teams are heading down. You see the jungle uh, on the mini map here on your on your left. All of Cloud9 are coming. So Hunter. One v four right now. Cronenberg from Jensen out from under the turret. A smoothie tanks the next set of aggro. Bjergsen going to take a turret in the deal though. TSM defend nicely. Yep, not only defend, but again, Bjergsen back at the split push. Finds himself some more gold in the outer turret. <laughs> this AoE there from the Tia Tumac. So this ends up being a you know a successful play from Spence Karen kind of, but I don't think it should have been. Um, as Contract goes in, and they did use the Shen ultimate there too. So a decent amount of resources expended, but all in all, the gold back to even, TSM Drake advantage, and Cloud9 are going to have to outplay them here because uh, they don't have a tremendous amount of reliable crowd control to set up their team fights with. It's so much more about zone control. They have a lot of areas that they can control with Zyra Ultimate with the um, uh, Gen uh, Jensen Giant Shield and the Rumble Ultimate. However, if they don't fight in a jungle corridor, TSM might be able to evade those and take, a take out a lot of the power that comes with it. And again, they're still waiting on some of their members to grow up as, as well. Sven, he's strong. Bjergsen also strong with their early lethality, but Turtle will scale nicely into this game. Biofrost should be helping in team fights as the more defensive, team fight-oriented support. And Haunter, 
is continuing to get stronger as a tank and should be impactful throughout the entire game. It's not saying the impact won't be. His rumble should be nice in team fights, but much like in game two for TSM, the barrier of execution is just a bit higher. And TSM, given that they've managed to find a way to catch up in this game and even it out, should be happy now to go back, play it a little slower, let Turtle get stronger, and if they see an opportunity, take it. A little ninja here with a spell shield makes walking through en enemy territory a lot easier. Yurk's in. Easily able to get out here. And you're right. I mean, the margin for error is very low uh, with those types of compositions. And TSM have actually been getting a decent amount of gold back into this game by their Ignite Zed split pushing, as no one could really answer Bjergsen getting to his double lethality already. And it looks like another one quickly on the way. Cloud9 do jump on him, though. Going in for it. Jensen trying to start things off. Jin Ultimate is dodging it around. Bifrost hits the next hit. Haunts are on the spang with the Stand United. Now looks to turn it around. Arrow lands on the contract. Get a taunt him in. Should be enough, but Jensen takes that spin on the other end. Now Sneaky getting jumped on by Bjergsen. Bjergsen flashes in with the Whoa. The pop is not quite enough. It is though with the Ignite. And now Impact. Taunted up by Haunter as the rest of TSM come down. TSM able to take down three members of Cloud9 and should be able to get a oh, chance. No. Whoa! Taunted as well. Pops his on his, has the chrono break. He That's killed, but it's in space. I think he's gonna go down in place. Excuses, Jensen ties back in. He wants a trade, but that's an ace for TSM. I think Smoothie walked in too close to the Shirk in there as well. Bjergsen got, got the full kill there. That's another... Got the bonus kill. Another one, yeah, bonus kill. Pass through. Ninja accuracy at TSM. We said, you know, margin for error for Cloud9 is super low. Uh, they did not meet that margin. No. TSM absolutely break this game wide open. Five people down, two extra turrets for TSM, and a healthy gold lead to boot. So what God9 are thinking here is that they see three members and they account for the Shen, uh, but they still think, okay, five versus four is maybe the best opportunity we get. That Rumble ultimate, zero damage uh, out of that thing. Uh, Contracts gets nailed with the Ash Arrow, so TSM evened it up very quickly there, and Hauntzer's just chasing off everybody in the back line as far as the damage. The only one from God9 that got anything done there was Jensen who quickly dove the back line and was able to kill Sven Skarin. Well, that's it. And let's see Smoothie here, because deceptively, he doesn't... Oh, yeah, Bjergsen. <laughs> see, he did. Shadow in, shirking down. That was full, full range, too. That was smart from TSM. They used one ninja to cover for the other ninja. Aha. This monster, I think, was on top of the shadow model. TSM, though, reap healthy rewards. Three and a half thousand gold up now with a Mountain Drake to get for themselves, if they'd like it, up in three seconds. They have one already, a second would be awfully nice. Because every time they win a fight, they'll take the maximum on objectives. Threatens Baron nicely as well, and this should be going over cleanly. Contract's almost in the area for a steal, but I don't know if he even wants to try and take it. Nah. Not worth it, just not worth the risk. Instead, they'll give it over to TSM. Jensen and Bjergsen meeting for a bit of anime. Oh, no, Stage United going to ruin the whole party. Bjergsen back in with a death oh. mark. Yeah, kill needs to land a little bit more. Q's going to land. It's not enough for the pop. And Bjergsen going to get it turned around. Goes back to a shadow as Haunter covers the rest of his team for the gin shots. Last bullet goes wide, and TSM defend well. Yeah, I mean, uh, with all, all those ultimates being used, you know, if you take out more and more of these variables, it favors TSM, who are already ahead, who have stacked up all these dragons, who have control of the map, who have this gold lead. So all in all, even though nobody dies there, I think that's advantage uh, as far as the skirmish goes to TSM, because they're setting up some vision around Baron. You know, they get to easily reset after that. And even though Cloud9 are trying to clear it out, it's going to take a while. Well, there again, everyone's still powering up. Did he get Cloud the last Nine. one? Yes. Nice, get all the wards there. He had a pink ward there anyway. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Makes it easier. <laughs> and now Baron Vision back in control. TSM with an instant question mark ping to the area. So aware that don't want to give that one away lightly. All right. Let's see what a, what a comeback looks like for Cloud9 then. Because you still do want to you know, jump on TSM unawares. Even though... Like we saw, they're pretty good at counter-engaging with Shen Ultimate and Ash Arrow. You know, those were the two members that weren't with the three-man squad and can add to that team fight even from afar. That's still the angle you want to go with if you're C9. Jensen can't make any headway versus Haunter now that his Spirit Visage is completed on top of 
his Merc Tread. So Hanser there was the one to really hold his own in the lane phase. Got himself a solo kill. And he has been doing quite nicely for them. And then we talked about the Tree SM with Ivan Naka. Contract oh. phase check-in. Arrow lands in, hits contracts, damage is there. Bjergsen wants to try to finish him off, man. Skaren able to clean it. These are why we keep saying margin for arrow is so low. There's no one who can safely take an arrow. Anyone who gets hit with this arrow is going to have huge health percentage loss. Contracts last time, dead. Impact this time, dead. Baron now, possibly dead. <laughs> well, 6,000 health left. Bjergsen, they're a little late. Smoothie trying to zone them out, but Gentle wants to dive in for it. He's on to total. Damage is big. TSM trying to finish everything here. Sand United might save total. The exhaust is down as well. He'll flash out of it, but they have to get out the barrel. 1,300 contracts is in! And there, and there it goes down! See that walk in and take oh the Baron! Oh my goodness! Jensen still at it! Still going. Pops is on. He's after the convergence. Stuns up Hornsa. <laughs> chase him down. Hornsa very tanky, but Jensen wants the squishy Biafrost. Can't get it, but... That was horrible for TSM. That is a barren throw right there. Let's see how far that throw goes, though. Cloud9 so happy about this pickup. You can see Jensen there. He doesn't hesitate at all. He knows we can't just walk around Baron and wait for this, you know, poke. Jensen beelines it right into the back line. He takes all the DPS off Baron. So then Svenskaren is sitting in there with nobody helping him DPS this Baron. They've got split calls where Two members are trying to fight Cloud9. You can't have split calls where just the jungler is trying to finish the Baron by himself. The rest of the team is fighting. That is the worst possible scenario. You either have to all turn or all burn. And they got split up there. Cloud9 picked them apart. That's exactly what Cloud9 needed uh, to get back into this game. Let's see how much gold they can get off of it. Because now they're the ones with the push advantage and they're all headed right down mid lane. Still a 50-50 Baron as well. Sven was there to at least maybe smite it, but everything goes wrong after TSM's reckless decision. And C9 tied the game back up. Three turrets to four, gold lead well in their favor, and they're pushing for more with this Baron buff. They know that this is a, a window that's been open for them, and they want to push it as far as they can go. Bjergsen is looking to flank, try and get in here from the side, and Hanser will be coming in on his back. This will be the double ninja Backline dive. Soon to be added to the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Only one ninja getting caught right now. Contracts doesn't quite land a spike. So Zed gets away. No slow forth coming. Gonna take the Grump away instead. There is a turret to defend here, but I'm not sure TSM fancy defending just an outer turret versus a barrened up Cloud9. Only a minute 30 on the buff. Cloud9 need to make some haste to do real damage here, but should at least get themselves ahead. I do think this one is forfeit, yeah. This should be easy pickings. Um, but TSM could pose a bigger threat at the secondary oh, one. Oh, oh, here it is, the double ninja back yeah, dive! Sneaky ninja Z, taunts up as well. Sneaky goes down. Bjergsen makes a huge play with the help of his top lane as Sven flashes out the safety. Jensen, Corona breaks back in. Big redemption though, coming out from the support. And Bjergsen gets a double kill. And all of the judges, 10, 10, 10 for that one. Bjergsen and Hanser. Absolutely destroyed <laughs> Cloud9. They actually, I thought they were gonna wait till the next turret, but they jumped right on him. Immediately, immediately annihilate sneaky contracts and impact. So that was a short lived comeback. I have to ask you is double ninja backline dive a winter or a summer sport? <laughs> That's definitely a spring sport here. <laughs> <baby>. <laughs> well, they'll take a turret for their troubles there as well. Let's watch. I'll split the middle. Let's watch this 10 again. Yep, there it is. Sneaky even flashed away, but it still can't get out of there as Bjergsen's able to uh, get forward immediately with Hauntzer, still able to come in. Then he can easily land the flash, and there's nobody who can take shots on this team. CSM, take him down. I mean, they take him, but don't take him very well. 50-50. That's how I felt after that Baron throw. <laughs> Andre goes down, no TSM. Stacking objective massively here, I mean, sure. Bad decision making at the Baron gives it over to Cloud9, but they make the proactive play to get themselves back in the game. And four Drakes is a huge overall win. We can kind of understand what they wanted the Baron, because they had two Mountain Drakes, and now they've got three. Three Mountain Drakes. Uh, means these turrets will fall very, very quickly as well. And TSM have not been shy about returning to the split push here. Bjergsen is now level 16 on uh, Zed, even though 
Jensen has been the man for Cloud9. He's, there's not much that he he can really do to to bring together a team fight. You know, he's he's doing his best. He's diving in the back line, taking them out, but uh, you know, causing the scatter is not quite enough. And I don't know, even as level 18, with how many kills he's been able to get, if he's going to be able to answer. He's got no help. We saw it in the last game where TSM's comp just didn't have anyone else to kind of get the damage deals in. And Jensen wants to die, but he's got really no one else to die with unless they have picture perfect initiation. Impact is 0 6 on this Rumble. Not been able to have any really game changing Rumble ultimates. And uh, it looks like, once again, team with the tank. Advantage here in mid game. 32 minutes in, though. TSM, no objectives will come up too soon. So they're taking a little bit slow and trying to move through the ward lines. They're actually not really being aggressive at it at, it at all, even though they do have San United. Because they're saving all of their cards for the soon spawn of Baron. Yeah, 145 till that one's up. Jerkson, though, poised for a potential 1v1. Not sure he wants to go in onto the Zonya's chrono break up, Jensen. It'll signal that he wants to go in if we see the Edge of Night activating. Does Take. not go for that, so we probably won't get any action. Taking the farm instead, TSM playing it slow as they move up towards the next major objective. They've got a huge Drake advantage mm. for this next Baron fight. And they seem to have played the team fights fairly straightforward. They've got that compositional advantage as well. Yeah. I think that TSM, you could say, they should be a little bit more aggressive in setting up their vision uh, because as soon as that sucker spawns, three Mountain Drakes, you can take it down in a second or two. So if they have these control wards, there's four control wards in inventory right now for TSM. If they move right to Baron right now, place them down, uh, they should be able to at least make C9 come face check them with all the squishy members. That would be a death sentence. Spence going, going to get spotted by Jensen. Cloud9 still have... The foothold in the Baron area. Scry's Bloom by Smoothie. Going to find themselves a few wards to take down. Mm -hmm. TSM just don't quite have it all set up yet. 30, 30 seconds still Baron. Yeah. I mean, right now they don't even have Hanser pushing bottom wave. He's using his ward actually to protect his split push. And they're going to go for the slow pressure of the Shen push on bottom to slowly build up and force Cloud9's hand. Wow, that Scuttle Crab is actually quite good for C9. It's gonna provide them with a lot of un undeniable vision. Well, smooth. He got tagged. There's the arrow. Just misses. Good flash. Jerkson gets tagged, but no snare from Jin following up. C9 looking for a play. Yeah, and they're getting Nancy. They are sleeping in. Some poke on the Spence Garen, but Haunter is now starting to provide even more pain for Cloud9. He actually taunts back towards the wave to get the push started. Yeah. All right. Gonna keep it up, and C9 have to make this decision now. Rumble's heading down, actually. It looks like Impact will volunteer. He has teleport, it just has a long channel time, so you have to be careful with it. Jensen down here as well, actually, so they're gonna use 2v1. Oh, they spot a contracts. They Ooh. trade Ed of, Edge of Night spell shields. <laughs> Ooh. No arrow up, but there's the vision that TSM wanted around the Baron. Oh, Bjergsen all in for Smoothie, looking to make the play. He's out, bye bye. kill! And now Haunter fights Sneaky, huge shot on the back end. Gets the next kill, and now the redemption down. Gonna keep Haunter chugging forward. Once again, the tag team between these solo landers has been huge this series. There we go. They are able to flash in, finish him off. That's two kills down. Jensen, Contracts, Impact. They've got to make their last stand now. And Impact can't make it back in. He's in mid lane, but he canceled that teleport. Baron is going down Too so late. quickly. Equalizer burning down. Don't miss this smite. Spence Garen nails it. And now Contracts, the next target, Jensen rolls away from that arrow. All right, C9 going to try and turtle inside their inhibitor turrets. Very, very difficult here as Hanser still has Terraport. He can usher these minions right up to the inhibitor turret while the rest of TSM pushes down mid lane. Oh, actually, Jensen is just trying his best to make this one a Cloud9 victory. He's still at it, takes down Wild Turtle. Maybe it buys them a little bit of time and deflates some of the momentum of this Baron buff. Let's take a look at it. Turtle. He's just chilling. Turtle did save his summoner spells, though. Ow. So, 
<laughs> I guess he was like, yeah, Jensen's there. All right, I'm saving my summoners. I mean, I like that decision from Turtle, but Jensen just erased for Ash off the map. I mean, almost six out of uh, Echo, excuse me, is going to do that. Jensen at 4 1 and 0. He is very tough uh -oh. to handle. Oh, double Pearson's into backline dive again. New mission. All right. First heat's down, they scored a 10. Here's the second heat. Can they cancel it? Oh, oh my god! I cancel it by killing him, I guess. Jensen stuns one up, but he's coming out of Zonius. He should go down here. Bjergsen gonna stab him straight in the back. Ay, 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 that damage from Bjergsen. Oy. All right, well, let's see about this. Mm, is anybody even gonna get close to try and steal this? Ah, uh, Sneaky W, put your faith in that. Is anybody gonna stop Honsa? Well, Turtle's back alive. They have no teleports. It's not looking somebody, good. Somebody block it. There we go. <laughs> They're what? Oh. Uh -uh. Sneaky. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 that looked close. <laughs> then Scare and another Clutch Smite, though. We're going to be OK today. Decently close, but they are able to secure it. And TSM move forward. Baron and Elder Dragon on split push already in motion. And Cloud9, in defense of the Alamo, can they do it? I mean, Jensen's still dead for 10 more seconds. Turtle snared up. They're looking for him. Bjergsen gonna take the first use. Fenskeri now joins in. Turtle at Turtle. Huge damage. I need to heal him. Forza running interference. Turtle oh. gets the necessary healing. And that might actually stop this phase of the push here. Yeah. What a, what a rally there from C9. All damage focused on the Turtle. Buys him some time. Turtle's trying to lifesteal off of whatever he can. It's a little bit of health from the jungle creep here, but... TSM still going to return. Turtle just going to be cautious. They need to break here. Turtle putting the wall to his best use he can. Needs to hit a couple champs, though. Inhibitor goes down. TSM just have too much damage. Cloud9 can't stop the first one. Where are TSM going next as they make their way topside? Even with all of those shields, Turtle dropped down to 44 health right before the uh, reden redemption came in to heal him back up. Looking a bit healthier now. Yeah. Still keeping up the push, and he still has his flash. So he held on to that. Cloud9 backs against the walls. Talk about backline, actually. Smoothie and Sneaky down. It's the finals of Double Ninja backline dive. Oh, good catch. Smoothie deleted. And now Spence Gehring in a right haunts are in. TSM take the top lane in here. Cloud9 are running out of stuff to defend. Next to start number one is where TSM will turn their attention to. That's going to go down. Cloud9 trying to defend. Impact burns the ultimate. It's just getting a little desperate. Jensen dives in onto Haunter. Contract's almost dead. Spence Karen almost gets sniped by Jin, though. And Haunter's still fighting out. Bjergsen into the back line, wants to try and take him down. Oh. Ricky goes down there. Bjergsen is now dominating. Spence Karen gonna get jumped up by Contract's Good exhaust over Biofrost. And that's gonna be a kill. TSM, they storm the throne room. Can they topple the kings of the NALCS? Yes, they will. And in Cloud9, their first loss of the spring. And our new favorite Olympic sport comes up real <laughs> big there for TSM, the double ninja. Backline dive.